Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today we're gonna examine whether salt and pepper only is the play action fake of the barbecue world. We've heard it repeated a million times. Texas style brisket has salt and pepper only. But I'm not so sure anymore. I recently read an article on the Texas Monthly website that was done with John Lewis, who was one of the original pitmasters at Franklin Barbecue. And in that article, he said something that shocked me. So I'm gonna read it verbatim, we'll put it on the screen. You guys are welcome to check it out yourselves. So we can pop on the screen. John Lewis says, I did want to add that I've never cooked a brisket in my life, whether it be at La Barbecue, at Franklin Barbecue, or on the competition circuit with just salt and pepper. I have yet to do that. Then Daniel Vaughn asks, what to use for seasoning at La Barbecue? John Lewis replies, Lowry seasoned salt, black pepper, garlic powder, mustard, and pickle juice. Daniel Vaughn then asks, is that the rub you used at Franklin? John Lewis says, I can't say. Dun, dun, dun! Okay, it sounds like a barbecue mystery to me. So my thought on it is this. If he replies with, I can't say, but he's happy to tell people exactly what he's using right now at his current restaurant, and he's happy to say that he's never used salt and pepper, that makes me think, well, if he worked at Franklin for several years, especially in the beginning, and he never used salt and pepper in his life, well, something doesn't add up here. Something's not matching up. And my thought was simply, okay, I think he probably signed a non-disclosure agreement. I can't prove that, I don't know that, but it certainly sounds that way. And if he signed a non-disclosure agreement, that means he can't presumably say exactly what happens at Franklin Barbecue. But here's the thing. He said that they don't use just salt and pepper, and what have we heard a million times? Salt and pepper only. I've kind of heard rumblings about this in the past, and uh, the idea was if you use Lowry seasoned salt and black pepper, you can say, well, it's salt and pepper only, but it's really not. There's another article uh, from Andrew Knowlton where it says that Franklin insisted, this was, I believe, in 2011 when he called Franklin Barbecue the best barbecue restaurant in the country. He said Franklin insisted that he used only salt and pepper. But he doesn't know if he believes Franklin because it tastes like there's more going on than just salt and pepper. So if you guys want a link to that article or the Texas Monthly article, I'll include both of those down below. Feel free to fact check me on, on any of this. The bottom line is, when John Lewis worked at Franklin Barbecue, he didn't cook a brisket with just salt and pepper. And it was that stuff that they were doing early on that catapulted them to the top of the list of Texas barbecue. So if they had a winning formula developed, why would they change it? And if in fact, they only use salt and pepper at Franklin Barbecue, and that's public knowledge. Franklin has talked about that, I don't know, a million times. If it's already public knowledge, I don't think he'd be in any way bound by a non-disclosure agreement to say exactly what the owner says publicly. I don't know, I'm not a lawyer. These are just my thoughts, but feel free to check it out for yourself. And I'm gonna pursue this line of reasoning and do a test. I'm gonna do a test with three briskets. One gets only salt and pepper, and you can make phenomenal brisket with just salt and pepper. I'm not saying this is a game changer, it will change your life. But I wanna see, does it actually improve the brisket beyond simple salt and pepper? So we have our salt and pepper brisket. We're gonna have our John Lewis style brisket that's gonna use salt, but in the form of Lowry seasoned salt, black pepper, garlic powder, mustard, and then we're gonna spray with pickle juice. Okay, let me see what's going on with this fire. This is so annoying. We're just gonna to have to take a second. As part of the pit master's burden, I actually had to mess with the fire just now, so I can't remember exactly what the last thing I said was. I think I was talking about the pickle juice. So, pickle juice isn't just water, obviously, because it's pickled in vinegar, that's the first thing. There's salt in it as well, and then also, there are the soluble parts of the cucumber. So you're leaching out from the cucumbers, some starches, some pectin, a bunch of other organic compounds that we won't go into depth about, but it's not just water, it's not just vinegar. And if you've ever had cucumber water and you drink it, you notice that the texture that you have in your mouth when you drink that water is different than just plain old water. So I'm curious to know, is that really gonna change the flavor or the texture of the brisket? Now, I think this is the play action fake of barbecue. You may be wondering why I call it the play action fake of barbecue. And I know I have a lot of international viewers and a lot of people in the USA who just don't watch football, but I call it a play action fake because in football, you have two broad categories of offensive plays. You have passing plays where the quarterback throws the football, and then you have running plays where the quarterback hands off the football. Now, there are other kinds of plays. There are wildcats. It doesn't really matter. But <laughs> the point behind it is this. A play action fake is when the quarterback pretends to hand the football off to the running back and makes it look like a running play, 
but really, he holds onto the football and throws the ball. Run for two yard loss. Second and seven. Fakes it to Starks. Now going for the deep ball. Nelson is there, and he's got it for the touchdown. And so he's trying to make you think one thing, but is doing something different. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Are they telling us that it's just salt and pepper and they're doing something different? I don't know, it really seems like it, but we're gonna test it out. It's called Mad Scientist Barbecue. I gotta do some experiments. We're gonna find out if this is better than just salt and pepper. And so for the third test, I'm gonna use a known quantity that's definitely not just salt and pepper. It's the Big Bad Beef Rub from AmazingRibs.com. Now, I've shouted out AmazingRibs.com about a million times. Because it's awesome, there's so many resources there. If you wanna dial up your barbecue game, Go check them out, they're super cool. They have tons and tons of information. And it's not just information, it's really good information. So do yourself a favor, go check them out. And I've used that plenty of times. I've used salt and pepper countless times. And I wanna compare the one in the middle that's gonna be somewhere in between just salt and pepper and then the complicated rub from amazingrub.com. I wanna to try to figure out if that middle one is like my memory of eating at Franklin Barbecue. Because I noticed that it was different than my brisket, it was better but is it a result of just superior technique? Probably in part, but could they be using some extra seasonings to really dial it up a notch? Let's wait and see. So if people are saying that seasoned salt and black pepper are just salt and pepper, let, let me read the ingredients on the back of this bottle really quick. Salt, okay, fair enough. Sugar, hmm. spices, that could include anything, but it says it includes paprika and turmeric, onion, cornstarch, garlic, tricalcium phosphate, which is gonna keep it from caking together. Uh, sunflower oil, extractives of paprika, and natural flavor. So I don't know exactly what's in natural flavor or spices, but this definitely isn't just salt. I wanna give a shout out to Porter Road for sponsoring today's video. To do this test, I needed high quality briskets because I know at those really great barbecue joints in Texas, they're using really high quality stuff. And I reached out to Porter Road and asked if they would let me do this test. And they said yes, so I'm super thankful because right now, I can't find briskets locally. Number two is I can't find high quality briskets locally, that's for sure. And so this is what's allowing me to do the test. So thank you, Porter Road, I appreciate it. If you guys don't know about them, please be sure to go check them out. But I'll talk more about it later. Just know we're using high quality briskets here and we're gonna compare the flavor on the outside. Let's get these trimmed up, seasoned, and on the smoker. First, salt and pepper only. All right, onto the smoker. That felt weird. Next up, big bad beef rub. The salt is always added separately. Now the spices. So I'm gonna cook these three like I always do briskets. I'm gonna do these overnight and I'll probably wrap it about eight hours in. The temperature is gonna be 275 the entire time and I'm using oak wood the entire time. So I'm trying to get the very best possible results and we're gonna wrap in butcher paper, all the normal stuff, but it's gonna be nighttime, it's gonna be hard to see and plus you've seen me do it a million times. But we're gonna check back in with you tomorrow morning and we're gonna taste these and see, is there a difference? Is it really just hype? Is this kind of an urban legend? Is, is this the decoy and the real thing is just salt and pepper? I don't know, but I can't wait to find out.
All right, guys, so a 16 hour cook has now been shortened to a few seconds. But one thing I think I can tell by just looking at these three briskets is you don't need extra stuff in your rub to get great bark. They all have great bark. I mean, they're really attractive looking briskets. Even though they all have great bark, it looks to me that the Big Bad Beef Rub has the darkest bark. The Mustard and Lowry's has the second darkest bark. And then the Salt and Pepper has the lightest bark, though still dark. I mean, they all kind of look like meteorites from a distance. They smell great, but each one smells a little bit different. So I wanna know how much does that carry over into the taste? So we're gonna slice these up in a second and we're gonna compare the flavor on the outside. I'm not concerned about how juicy each one is because I treated them the same way, I cooked them the same way. The idea here is which one is gonna taste the best. But before I do that, I wanna give a big shout out to our sponsor for today, Porter Road. I've been using Porter Road for a long time. I use their stuff because they produce great quality meat. So if you're gonna do a brisket and you wanna count on something that's gonna be delicious and amazing, Porter Road has your back. Porter Road dry ages their beef for 14 days as a hanging carcass. So it's gonna taste that complex flavor that people love about dry age, but you're not gonna to have to sacrifice any of the products. So you're not gonna to have to cut off any dried parts of the meat, but you can just use it and you can do steaks, you can do briskets, you can do any cut of beef and get that complexity of flavor and it shows up at your door. It is super convenient. I've been using it for a long time simply because it's extremely good. And I recommend all of you guys, if you're gonna do some brisket to wow people or if you're gonna to try to cook some steaks and blow people's socks off, Porter Road is the way to go. I'm gonna put a link in the description. Check them out. They are a top-notch company and it's just been a pleasure to work with them. So first off, I'm gonna cut into the salt and pepper brisket. Give that a taste, then move up to the Lowry seasoned salt with the mustard and pickle juice. And then I'm gonna move to the Big Bad Beef Rub, the most complex of any of the rubs. But first of all, I wanna say, I learned something from my wife because she wanted to know how I figured out what I was gonna use for the rub because she saw me kind of haphazardly putting on mustard and then Lowry seasoned salt and garlic powder and black pepper. She's like, how did you know how much to use? I was like, I don't know. He doesn't say quantities in the article, so I just eyeballed it. But she went to the article and looked in the comments and John Lewis himself, or apparently John Lewis, said exactly how to do it. And he said, if you have any problems, show up at La Barbecue and I'll walk you through it. I don't know this guy, but I love this guy. I mean, just amazing. So I wish I would have seen this, I don't know, eight years ago or whenever it came out because I would 100% have gone to La Barbecue to check it out. But if I had to do the test over again, and I think I might, I would use that recipe. And also I just assumed we all know what happens when you assume, but I assumed that he was using the pickle juice to spray instead of vinegar. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. He doesn't talk about that in the comment, but if this turns out to be really good, I'm gonna use his method and I'm gonna use the ratios that he outlines in that comment and see if that's kind of like a winning formula for brisket. Let me get into the salt and pepper brisket and I'm gonna get slices from each of these and taste them. Okay, so I'm ready to taste and I'm gonna move up from fewer spices to more spices and then finally the most spices. So first up is salt and pepper. I wanna know, is this gonna stand up to Lyra seasoned salt and Big Bad Beef Rub? You guys know me, I'm using salt and pepper all the time, so this is kind of important to me. So I need to know, do I need to make an adjustment with how I do barbecue or is the simplicity of salt and pepper really the way to go? Let's find out. Man, that's good brisket. Mm. As my papa used to say, you can't beat that with a stick. That's really good. Eric, you gotta try this. All right, I don't think my wife wants to be on camera, but I'm gonna have her try it too. This is really good. You gotta try it. What are your thoughts? Okay. All right, so Erica gives that an eight out of 10 in terms of flavor. I'm a little hurt, but I'll get over it. Next up, Lowry seasoned salt. Wow. Man. This is having me question my life choices. 
Gosh. Okay, that's good. Let me try another bite here. Wow. I didn't think it would make this big of a difference. My first impressions are, that's better. I think I'd rather have that bite than the first bite. Even though the first bite was great, I mean, I just think that this is superior. It's, it's hitting more of your kind of flavor taste buds. So, wow. But you still get clear smoke flavor too. So that's my issue usually with rubs is because they put so much stuff into it, you lose out on the smoke flavor. It's kind of hanging out in the background. But with this, it's kind of like a beautiful marriage between, oh, different seasonings and smoke flavor is the backbone of everything you taste. Here we go, big bad beef rub. Mm. This is very good. The seasonings on the outside, the spices and flavorings are really tasty. But the problem is I think the brisket gets a little bit lost in the background. If you're producing real smoke with a real fire, you want that flavor to shine and you don't want it to be covered up with other stuff. So if you're using a smoker that doesn't really give a lot of smoke flavor and you want to just kind of bolster the flavor of your brisket, I think maybe that's a good idea. But for me, I'm thinking I don't like it as well as the other two. The other two, I mean, I would 100% spend good money on one of those briskets. This one, I think it's very good, but I like a clearer smoke flavor. So right now, Eric and I are both leaning toward the Lowry's brisket. Um, and if a change that simple can really improve the quality of the flavor, I mean, I think I'm gonna be doing it. All right, Erica, try this out. Aren't these briskets good though? Mm -hmm. These briskets are freaking great. People are trying to get Creekstone Prime and you know, those are extremely good briskets, but I'd put this, I'd put these up against anything. I put these up against Wagyu in terms of flavor. I love that. You like it? Mm -hmm. It's sweet. Yeah. What's in it? Sugar, Burnett, ready? Ooh, that bite's good. You can taste the smoke on that. I'm not like down the best. I don't think I do, hold on. I think I like this one the least. Can I taste the point of the Lowry's again? Yeah, I'll take a bite too. See, I like this better. There's more beef in the Lowry's one and more smoke. And when I make a brisket, I wanna taste beef, I wanna taste smoke. And this one just does it for me. You get all that complexity of flavor on the outside. I like the big bad beef rub the best. It's wrong. <laughs> all right, these briskets look so good. I had to cut one of these points in half, just so you understand like the quality of this meat. So we didn't sandbag anything in this test. We got the best briskets we could and we cooked them side by side the exact same way. And in terms of flavor, I think we have some answers. So to sum it up, I think the Lowry's with the garlic powder, the black pepper, the mustard, the pickle juice. I think that one would get my vote. And so what I need to do is do some more testing with this. And I'm gonna do a couple more side-by-side -side comparisons just for me. And if I really think it's better, I'm gonna start doing my briskets that way and I'll, I'll let you guys know about that. And if you haven't tried this, definitely give it a shot. Cause I need feedback too. I have, you know, one set of taste buds. My wife has one set of taste buds. But you guys out there who are barbecue connoisseurs are gonna be able to provide me more and better feedback than I could get just by eating it myself. So I'm gonna ask you guys, please do this test too and let me know what you think. I mean, to me, it dials up the flavor, but you lose none of the integrity of the smoke or the beef. I think with the Big Bad Beef Rub, you have great flavor on the outside, but the smoke and the beef kind of get lost a little bit more. So I don't think you can go wrong with any of these methods, but for me, I think the Lowry's method is the best. I always appreciate you guys watching. You can support the channel by liking this video, by commenting down below and subscribing to the channel. All those things help. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time.